tried to record this on an iPhone, but it looks ugh, it's terrible. Like it's way too zoomed in. Um, it doesn't have. A, I can't find a really how to get the proper angle. It wasn't even recording footage properly. Uh, it, the iPhone is my mum's old phone because she likes upgrading her phone a lot more than I do. So I thought, oh, I might as well try it because this camera, well, not the prettiest. You know, it's not the, the prettiest looking camera. It doesn't have record the best videos. So I thought, oh, experiment. But it did not work out. It was not a good experiment. This thing might be said not. It doesn't record as well as other stuff, but at least it's reliable. <laughs> Today I'm going to be reviewing. Giant Days, which is a comic by John Allison. Uh, it's run 18 issues so far, I think, and it run, runs in six issue long segments. Um, the first artist for the first six books was Lisa Treyman, and then it kind of moved on to Max Serin afterwards for the, uh, the next 12. Set in the Scary Go Round Bad Machinery universe, which is John Allison's very, his unique universe, which is set in kind of the north of England and Yorkshire. Um, and it follows characters from past installments. Originally Giant Days was something that he wrote by himself, he drew by himself, he coloured by himself, but Boom Studio picked it up and uh, decided to make it into a bigger series, so he's now only writing for it. It's set in university, it follows three characters, Essa, Essa de Groot, I think her name is, uh, Susan, and Daisy. Es Essa is a very gothy girl, she's kind of the main character, she's got, she's a very unique character. Because she's described as pretty, but at times it can be very airheaded. But it can be kind of interesting. Kind of has very unlucky. Like misfortune follows her around. That's kind of like a, the first plot's kind of based around that. Um, but she's but being a goth. She kind of leads herself into these really funny situations, these kind of surreal situations where she joins like a secret cult and like <laughs> stuff with, like rituals. And Susan, on the other hand, is the very the mother of the group. She's kind of the most serious. She's got the head on the most straight. Um, and finally there's Daisy, who is kind of homeschooled, she's very naive, but she does evolve as a character as serious girl and she kind of gets more intelligent. But she's always got that kind of niceness, she's a very nice kind of angelic kind of person. Very, like, she cares for birds in a few bits, it's, as she herself has also some funny moments because, you know, her naivety is explored throughout the series. Um, it's very much in a John Allison style. His style is very witty, he's very surreal, it's very British in a way. But there are times when, because he's writing for a more generalised bigger audience it can at times lose some of its charm and I feel like that's one of the, my few criticisms of the books is that because he's writing for so much more people uh, at times it can feel diluted to kind of appeal to more of a mass audience um, but it's not too much I mean only if you don't read Bad Machinery you probably won't notice it but at times it can feel like he's lost some of its Britishness kind of made it such a unique series his stuff is very slice of life though this is very much based around university uh, and kind of the struggles are going on with this surreal, kind of almost supernatural sometimes situations in university, like any stuff normally focuses on young people uh, searching out the surreal and supernatural. Because he has so much more money for this production, sometimes the comedy can go into a bit more slapstick, a bit more dynamic visual comedy. Uh, it's a lot less focused on just like witty play, which is kind of what his style normally is. It's very sarcastic characters who make sarcastic comments and like. Sometimes there's funny situation that comes from the supernatural and the surreal, but this has a lot more slapstick comedy, a lot more generalised, kind of appeal to more people kind of thing. Compared to his regular stuff, the, st the stories are a very different structure because it's six per arc, so there's kind of a, a six issue overarching story and then each one of the six has their own like mini plot, rather than what he does, normally he has a very long, one big intricate plot in mind, which at times means it can lose a little bit of focus compared to the webcomic stuff that he does. Uh, but it can also be more expansive in some ways as well because he has kind of more time to play with it almost feels like he can play a little more with the structure but it's kind of strange because it also feels more rigid in some ways but more playful in other ways I prefer the original artist Truman over Serin because Truman style's a lot more detailed I'd say it's got a little bit more character it's a little bit more messy though while uh, Serin's style's a lot more clean a lot cleaner lines, a lot smoother I'd say uh, while Truman's style's a lot more slightly more angular, more rigid and it just it's not like necessarily a bad change, I can see a lot of people prefer in Serene style, but me I kind of prefer the, the, bit, the slightly bit more character, the slightly bit more edgy side of Truman's work. But I mean they are very similar in how they and how they uh, draw and the colorist doesn't change until I think soon they're just changing out now. So that, so it's like having the same colors will keep a very unified look to it. And most people didn't notice, I mean it took me a few issues to actually notice there was a difference. So I say if you're into Slice of Life, if you're into like witty comedies or slightly surreal comedies, definitely check this one out. It's a very sweet book, it says it's Slice of Life so it's got very kind of simple 
stakes to it, but sometimes because of John Lyson's very funny and strange mind, it can get very, it can really surprise you. And there are some actually quite funny bits in it that you probably won't expect. 